Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 6. This is a chapter, one of my favorites, this is gases. And so in this chapter we are going to talk about properties of gases and um, quite a few other things. Um, one thing that's, that will stand out with you is there are calculations in this, but they're very basic. And so as long as you sort of pay attention uh, to the basic formulas, you'll do just fine. So f when we talk about gases, we have to first talk about something called the kinetic molecular theory. And this just has some postulates on here that are very important because we, when we do calculations, we have to make some assumptions. And so the first assumption we know is that gas consists of very small particles. They move rapidly in straight lines. And that is, as you can see over here on this, on this drawing right here, you see that they are bouncing off walls. And when they bounce, it's kind of like if you've ever played billiards, they'll bounce. And depending on the angle that they hit the container, then they will uh, bounce off. But they'll do these straight lines. They do a lot straighter than I do, of course. They have essentially no attractive or repulsive forces. So you assume that they really don't, um, they don't really have any type of interaction with each other. They're very far apart because they're gases. Molecules are very far apart. They have very small volumes contained uh, compared to the volume that they're in. And their kinetic energies um, will increase with you, if you increase pressure, temperature. Sorry. So if I light a fire under this, then it's going to make these guys move faster. OK? So those are, those are some basic components of molecular kinetic theory. Remember, kinetic is energy in motion. So when we talk about gases, we talk about them in terms of pressure, volume, temperature, and then how much do we have. OK, and so as we as we do our calculations, you're going to see that these properties that we use to describe these gases are very important. And sometimes we will have all of them in a calculation. Sometimes we'll only have one or a few. Um, let me just say, too, that it's important that we understand that there are different units that we can use for this. So pressure could be in atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, pascals or tor. Volume can usually be in liters or milliliters. If it's in English units, we have to convert it. Um, Celsius and Kelvin, usually you're going to change it to Kelvin uh, in order to do these calculations. And then the amount can be in grams or moles. But remember, when we do calculations, and stoichiometry especially, we're going to have to change those grams to moles. So just a few things to keep in mind from the chapters that we've done before. So we said gases are very small, but they have lots of energy. And so the more, the faster they hit against the container, the more energy they're going to have. So if you, if you think about ping pong balls and you like throw a bunch of ping pong balls in a cylinder and they start bouncing all around, okay, that's kind of, that kind of what you should picture. And so they're pushing against those walls and then bouncing. And so as they do this, they are going to exert pressure on the sides of the container. And if they're gas particles that are just in the air, they're still exerting pressure, and we call that atmospheric pressure. And so that's the pressure exerted at one atmosphere, we call it. That's at sea level, basically. The volume of a gas is the same volume that, it, that the container occupies. Remember that gases, unlike solids, do not uh, have a, a set shape. So they don't have a, a set shape. They don't have a set volume. And so they take on the shape or the volume of wherever they are. The more collisions that you have on the side of the container, if the container will flex, okay, will expand, the more you're going to increase the volume. Temperature we measure in kelvins. OK, and a Kelvin, remember, is an absolute scale. It doesn't have degrees. The temperature of gas 
is directly related to its kinetic energy. If you decrease the temperature, then the molecules are going to move less. If you increase the temperature, the molecules are going to move more. And sometimes to just visualize this, I think about if I am walking um, along in the fall and I'm barefooted on the pavement, um, I'm just walking at a regular clip. But if I'm at the beach in Panama City or someplace and it's scorching hot and I don't have any shoes on, I'm going to move a lot faster. Okay, so if I've increased the temperature of that asphalt, my feet, just like our molecules, are going to move more. That's the end of section 6-1, and this is just an introduction. The next section that we will have will be... Um, as we start to kind of look at these relationships between the various properties of gases.